All right. Um, today we'll go over sort of GreenLink and then we'll explain what office hours are. We will go over some new indicators that we have and then we will open it up for any questions uh, you may have about GEM, any issues you uh, are presented with, and we will help you work through those. So our community practice is a monthly space where we connect people with uh, using data and relationships to advance climate and social equity. Uh, we like to dive into learning topics, do some peer consultation, show off new indicators, uh, show off work that we're doing with companies, what other uh, groups are doing in the space of climate and social justice and um, how Jim ties into that. Uh, we currently have over 575 members across the country um, that are a part of our community of practice. And we know that data doesn't tell the whole story. So, you know, tools like Jim though can help uh, get that story out there um, to better uh, tell it. So with, you know, groundwork and everything else, Jim is a tool, um, helps seamlessly work within it. Um, so though I'm sure everyone knows, we are in Atlanta 501c3 based uh, GreenLink Analytics. Uh, we are energy and equity experts that use data for good. Uh, work with cities and community based organizations across the US that are seeking a more equitable future. Uh, we're working with cities from the size of Bend, Oregon to Houston, Texas, and all across in the middle. So GEM is a mapping interface created to make data quick and easily accessible to workers and community members. Uh, GEM is now being used by 60 cities and 85 community-based organizations, and we have recently topped the 600 active member list. Um, so first off, we want to give a thank you to our GEM leadership committee. They are who help us um, facilitate these community of practices, uh, help us make GEM the best that it can be. Um, so we very much want to recognize them and the hard work they do within that. So what are office hours? Office hours are sessions where community members can ask questions and receive help one-on-one -on -one with the GEM platform. Um, we offer those weekly on Mondays from three to four in the afternoon and the Thursdays from four to five. Um, we schedule them through our equitymap.org slash services. Um, and then you can select office hours, pick the times and days that are perfect for you and um, work within that. So what do we have coming for 2023? Uh, a brief list of some of the indicators we're working on. Uh, we'll have indigenous territories, which will be coming soon. Um, we have our equity indexes, which are a community driven um, cohort that we're working on where uh, people can get together uh, with community members and find out you know, what the true issues are within their communities. Uh, we have a user data input function that we're currently working with. Uh, we're looking at bringing on transportation burden this year, along with air quality, flood data, and adding more health indicators. And then I wanted to quickly invite y'all to next month's community practice where we're going to be showing off our next layer, the indigenous boundaries. Um, you can sign up now to be one of the first people to get access to this new feature and get a hands on experience with it. Um, so plan to join us May 18th, 1pm, as usual, uh, to get your hands on this new feature before anyone else. And with that, we will open up the floor to anyone who has questions about Jim um, and you know what we have coming and uh, we'll get started.
Oh, good to see you, Divya. Um, so yeah, anything that, uh, is coming to mind, if you want to talk about the new indicators we've got coming out, some more information on those, um, any issues you might've had in gym that you would like to work through, this is an open space for that. Um, so I had a, uh, I guess probably a, a relatively quick question, but um, something that would help me uh, in the work that I'm doing right now is um, to understand um, what kind of uh, data y'all have in um, in the platform related to um, utilities. Um, I know it's it's probable y'all have um, data on um, like energy burden, but anything else related to that um, to to um, utilities. Uh, you know, how, how um, that interplay there uh, potentially between like housing as well um, would help my work. Um, and like I said, I feel like I, I do remember seeing like energy burden, but anything else related to that would be um, helpful for me. Okay. Yeah, we do have the energy burden up right now. Um, I'm looking through the list to sit here and see what might be um, best for you. What type of um, work are you doing right now? So maybe we can get an idea and, and figure out what would be uh, best features for you. Sure. So uh, right now I'm working on, um, so uh, ACEEE comes out with um, a city scorecard um, every, uh, every other year. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm leading the utilities chapter. Um, and something that we want to um, take a look at a little bit closer is um, uh, low income programs and, and performance data, um, obviously knowing that that's not the whole picture and we want to be careful about um, sort of like elevating certain um, utilities and cities that are like, quote unquote, high performing, um, but we just want to have like, a, you know, kind of like a robust picture um, from like different data sources to kind of um, look at that. Um, and yeah, so I guess like we're, we're trying to look at um, low income programs, but also, um, you know, like I said, the interplay between um, that and, and housing, potentially like the age of, of housing, things like that. Um, like I said, we, it is, it's still a work in progress, but um, we're receiving data from different utilities um, that are serving um, these large cities. And um, yeah, we, we have a section dedicated on um, kind of looking at what's called like an issue and focus. Um, and my idea for this year was to um, to look more closely at low income programs and like maybe even more specifically like multifamily programs. Um, so yeah, that, that's sort of where I'm going with this. Like I said, it's not like fully formulated yet, but um, I do think that there's something there that we can kind of elevate um, in importance for uh, this year's scorecard. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, in the Let's see here. I know that we've recently done work with the city of Philadelphia on building data. Um, and, you know, it was done as kind of a special project with them. Uh, Shar, can you speak any, any on what we may have according to that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So to recap that, um, we recently did a project with the city of Philadelphia, like Daniel mentioned, it was kind of to look at their building efficiency uh, programs and how they could better uh, structure those going forward. Um, we looked at residential, um, specifically single family and multifamily units. Um, but as Daniel said, that was kind of like a one-off project that we did in, in a contract with uh, the city of Philadelphia. But I think that would um, be a really good example here where we were able to, um, integrate their data set. So they gave us a list of all their buildings that they had um, for their city, um, split out by single family, multifamily, including um, all these different building indicators. Like you mentioned, building age was a part of that data sets for footage, stuff like that. And then um, we were able to integrate that with our gen data to basically aggregate it on a census tract level. 
Um, and then we have that data set available um, for the city of Philadelphia specifically on their um, gem page. And so they're able to overlay the Philadelphia building indicator basically with energy burden or other indicators that we have in gem. So that's always an option um, if you're interested in um, maybe you have a data set already um, and you want to integrate that with gem and it's not already in gem like that's certainly something we can have further discussions on um, to figure out like what a better way uh, we can approach that is to to make gem um, good for you and your specific projects. Did city of Philadelphia, did city of Philadelphia <clears throat> approach Gem and declare that they wanted to do this? Um, and uh, the other question is: uh, Is there is um, is that a data that they might be open to sharing for just um, you know us to learn about uh, how we can do that with the city? Um, I think it's a great exercise um, in understanding those um, correlations as we start to think about weatherization and you know the other the programs that we need to target and yeah. other you know, comprehensive things we need to target. Yeah. Um, sorry, I know I'll hop in there and then you can um, you can go from there and then we can talk through what you have on your screen. Um, but yes, definitely. Um, we have a contact in the city of Philadelphia who's awesome. Her name is Nidhi and I don't recall her last name at the moment, but she is really excited about all of this. So um, I'm sure she'll be more than happy to, um, to talk through this and we can link you guys up. And um, I'm sure she would love to, to kind of like showcase this data so other cities can kind of use this uh, as an example. Um, to answer your first question, Yes, the city of Philadelphia approached us, but this was kind of through our NRDC um, contact as well. So it was kind of like through NRDC and then through that we we started working with the city of Philadelphia. But yes, uh, they approached us with this problem and then we kind of talked through it and tried to figure out um, what what could we do to help them uh, with the data that they currently have. And that's kind of how we ended up with this, uh, what, you, what you're seeing on Daniel's screen right now. So mm -hmm. if you, uh, if, if anyone has these one-off data sets, this is kind of something that, and we hope to eventually um, have a user input function in GEM where um, you all could upload the data without um, really having all these interactions with us. Um, and then you could have your data easily um, integrated with Gen. We're not quite there yet. So right now we're kind of doing this one-off projects, but if that's something you all find yourself interested in, we can have further discussions on that and kind of do these one-off uh, projects together um, for sure. So just, yeah, let us know if you ever have a data set. I think it would be super helpful to integrate and we can we can talk. And just to piggyback on, uh, on Dee's point uh, about making sure that we are having the cities declare several of these entities, several, uh, you know, cities and utilities declare several, um, um, they declare the things that they are actually declaring. I mean, that we can verify them. I think um, it's helpful for us to also know what other kinds of data we can ask the city of based on, you know, how much, I mean, I, I think, what I'm trying to say is it would be great for us to connect with Philadelphia and see how this is working out and how they're using some of these things. Um, we also want to see how this can help us inform our repair programs, if, if possible, and how to overlay additional, you know, work towards energy uh, transitions, just energy transitions, based on this kind of information. So knowing, understanding how, when was the last repair that was done? When, how was it done? All those things, I think it's not easily accessible. Asking for these kinds of things will help collect all these data points eventually. So I'd love to be connected with the Philadelphia team uh, at, at some point. Yeah, yeah, we would love to connect to you. We're kind of wrapping up that project right now, hopefully like in the in the next week or a uh, week or so. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely connect you and you guys can have further conversations as needed or we can all hop a call, on a call. But yes, we're more than happy to, to connect you all. Yeah, and I'm also gonna declare on this because I have several partners here we've, we've known for a long time. Keep asking all these nuanced questions where we are in Cleveland, not really heading over to 
beyond uh, you know asking these questions we haven't had many projects that actually go in that direction so <laughs> um just stating that out there but while we're interested there there's there's a lot more we need to push on i hear you <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Divya. Um, also, can't wait to see you next month for our big Cleveland gym brouhaha that we're concocting. We'll be doing a live demonstration at uh, Cleveland Neighborhood Progress, where Divya comes from, also one of our gym leaderships. Um, Margarita, I saw you came in a little bit later. Uh, do you have any questions you'd like to ask of us? One you think you want to look at? Yeah, hi everyone. I actually don't remember how I got this meeting invite, um, but I'll introduce myself really quickly here. I can turn my camera on as well. Um, and I work at the city of Vancouver up in Canada in British Columbia, um, and we are trying to figure out how to measure equity in a climate emergency action plan. Um, part of it will be metrics based and based in data, but we're also trying to figure out like a more qualitative narrative like non-western colonial methodology for you know including those stories um, and providing that context in a fair just and equitable way of like how do we make sure our climate emergency action plan is actually like benefiting folks who need it the most um, but this map is really cool and i was looking online at the equity indicators um, just like a list that I found on your website. And I was just wondering, um, and sorry, I'm new here, so I'm not sure if this has ever been covered, but how are these indicators chosen? Like, was this related to like the greatest risks based on climate change? Um, I'm looking at this link here. I can just paste it in so you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I've just, yeah, I looked at a bunch of different like, um, and a lot of like US uh, equity indicator lists and they're all just very different. So I'm always just curious to know like how the indicators are chosen. So um, we do a lot of the indicators, we have a lot of data set. We do listening tours where we talk with people that are using Gem and find out what's most relevant to the work they're doing is how we sort of set up our pipelines. Um, something we did that may be helpful for you, um, in Atlanta, we did an equity cohort, and we're actually looking at doing it with multiple cities this year. Um, and basically what we did was we went into the communities, especially ones that are underserved, and we surveyed them and asked them personally, in your city, what is the most important values for you? Um, with all kinds of questions, air qualities, asthma rates, lack of internet, you know, going through the indicators we have and had them rank it on a score of one to 10, what is most important? And let me pull Jim back up. I will show you what... Um, how it looked when we finished the equity index. But um, that was sort of the methodology we had going into it was, um, yeah, it's very easy, you know, especially an issue we've had in the South and throughout the United States where it's easy to go to your richest neighborhoods and say, what do you guys want? Whereas trying to figure out the least serve that no one, the tiny dots that people forget about. Um, and so, yeah, we ended up creating an equity index, go to Atlanta, Georgia. When it loads. And so this is sort of um, some of the quick ideas of what people were, you know, most interested in. And then with ours, we're able to add and subtract uh, indicators up to 10. And so, you know, as if someone decided that eviction rate was more important, 
you know, you could move the slider over and it shows you, it see the map changes. So um, we get a better equity score. The uh, lower the score, obviously the least equitable the area is. Um, Southeast Atlanta has been notoriously um, underserved uh, along with, you know, this whole area of Georgia or of Atlanta. Um, so yeah, that was one of the projects we did. And something I would suggest is, you know, getting down on the level. We used um, incentives, uh, gift cards, different things to sort of help. We did both online and in person. We did like town halls and then also had online surveys. We ended up getting pretty good responses. I want to say, I know we were over 250, but I think we were getting up near the three, 350 uh, average, if not higher. Um, that project was started before I joined, so um, I didn't have direct hand on it. But um, I really think that would be a great avenue for you. Um, town halls, you know, online surveys, giving them, you know, an incentive. The incentive was one of the bigger ones of getting people to show up, obviously. Um, there was initially mistrust within neighborhoods. Of these people are coming in, they're asking us all these questions, but we were able to sort of build the trust within them, worked with um, other nonprofits that work in those communities. So adding a face that was familiar to the, um, the people really helped open it up. Um, we didn't just do it ourselves where all of a sudden, like you were saying, the proverbial, you know, white knight system of Greenlink's going to solve your problems. No, we're going to work with the people that are there and we're going to be help facilitate, but not be the the one who's the all, you know, yeah. mighty of it. Yeah, that's a really good idea. So it sounds like there was like a lot of work put into engagement, which is good to good to know and like definitely a good place to start because I think a lot of the times it's like, oh, what are the metrics we're most interested in? Um, but it's not really technically like on us. It should, as you were saying, like be like, what are, what does community value the most? I like the idea of like using community champions to kind of, um, enter into the community because sometimes it does like yeah when you were saying like you did a lot of engagement it's like oh like that kind of feels intimidating to get into some of the neighborhoods where it's like you know some of them can't care about climate change because they've got so much other stuff on their plate like in terms mm -hmm. of just like you know getting through like day to day and then you come in and talk to them about like the climate action plan and they're like I don't care so I think like the, the like little gift cards kind of help um, and then kind of not just coming in as this like outside thing but kind of getting to know someone in the community, like a community group or like a champion. That's a really good idea. That's really helpful. Do you guys have any um, like kind of reports or links about the engagement that you did that I could read up on? Uh, I believe, yeah, I believe so. If you look at, um, I'm not sure if this Atlanta whole cohort has been published yet, but yeah, if you go to equitymap.org, and uh, look under our publications. We have um, a lot of a lot of stuff in there with different cities that uh, we sort of worked with. Um, if you want to shoot me an email, um, I'll give you my email address. I can look it up and I can see you know what we have that you know might be able to pass along. Um, yeah, I'll I'll put it in the chat for you so it's a little bit easier. There you go. Thanks so much. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything else of it. That's that's really our you know biggest advice on it is definitely connect with someone in the community get on the floor and um, you're right. That was something that we we had was, you know, when you're struggling to feed and pay your light bills and everything else, it's, it's tough. Um, you know, I'm in 
you know, other things that, you know, I've seen work are weatherization programs. Um, we, Divya actually is, is one who works very heavily on it in, here in Cleveland. I'm in Cleveland also and was worked on those projects but adding energy efficiency to low income folks in their houses. Um, Y'all in Vancouver probably have the same problem we had in Cleveland with people that have ancient furnaces that if, if they work, they're burning so much energy. And, um, you know, that program getting into low income areas and promoting, you know, the ability to have better energy savings um, was a big one here in, in Cleveland. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, totally. Um, yep. Any other questions, um, you know, feel free to reach out and um, I can connect you with our um, director of community initiatives, uh, Jelly Duckworth. She actually worked directly on that project and give oh, you great the the real nuts and bolts as opposed to my big picture <laughs> <laughs> the big picture is really helpful as like an entry point though yeah and i can kind of sift through and see how this fits with the like in a vancouver context and like what we can do kind of moving forward because i think part of it for us is like we do want to get those metrics are so important but we also want to kind of see like how narrative data fits in and like more not even just qualitative but like just other forms like less colonial forms of, of like evaluating equity and climate plans. Right. So far, there's like not a lot of good examples from other like cities. And I think it's really tricky because like on one hand, we still have to like report to our council and they expect kind of like that metric space, like they're, you know, the typical, which is still good and we still need it, but it's like, yeah, what else can we do? Um, so if you have any examples of like cities that have tried to go that route, let me know too. I think that's, that's also really interesting to me. Absolutely. I absolutely will. Thank you, Margarita. Thank you. All right. Um, I guess if we don't have any other questions or anything, um, we will we will um head out. Uh let you know, of course, um, as always, if you need training or um want to add in folks from your organizations for access um, it's going to be uh, gem.equitymap.org uh, have them sign up with uh with our system we can get them in uh, and then always we offer training for any member new members uh, to catch them up I will I will be glad to teach them all about Jim. Okay, well, thank y'all for the great questions. Uh, thank you for letting us show you what we can do and sort of what we're working on. And everyone have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Nice to thank meet you. Thank you. Thank you.